Welcome to episode 27 of the Indie String Podcast. I'm your host, Kay, also known as Indie String on Ravelry. Welcome to everybody coming back, and welcome to any new viewers. I hope you guys had a wonderful holiday weekend and were able to spend time with your family and friends, and hopefully get to get in a little knitting time. So, um, this is the third time I am recording, because I can't seem to find my words today. I'm going to apologize in advance, and I am not stopping this recording. No matter how fumbly I become. Uh, I don't know what my, what my deal is today, but it must be that it's mid-morning, and uh, my husband's been sick, and it's been the holidays, and I just don't have it together for some reason. So you get to see me a little scatterbrained today. So any of you are, I'm sorry. I'm only like this maybe 10% of the time and not, you know, 100% of the time. So what have I been doing this week knitting wise? It's been kind of an odd week. Uh, I've been somewhat monogamous. I wanted to get some stuff done, so I had some good finished objects to show you guys. And I have really tried to bust out some stuff. Uh, but that has been full of disappointment. So let's just jump into it and talk it through. So the first thing I spent the majority of my knitting on is the Ashby cardigan. So I'm going to hold it up for you, and I'm actually have it folded in half because it is huge. And I love it that it's huge, but it, it's gigantic. So this is what it looks like. Last week I had um, to finish the border, the tip. And sorry. Do you see this is like color change? This is where I was last week. I finished this up, and then I picked up um, along this edge right here and knit in for the main body of this ball. So the mods that I did on this are the most common mods that many people did. If you go in Ravelry and you look at the finished objects for this pattern, there are a lot of helpful notes. And the majority of them have to deal with the main section of the pattern. So the main section of the pattern is a nice, wonderful, textured pattern. And there's a lot of crinkling on this side. So it, it looks nice. It is a moth stitch motif. And so that is achieved by knit and purl. So what they had to do is on the right side, the pattern calls for you to do the knit and purl section um, on that side. And then on the wrong side, you would purl all the way back for a rough row. There's basically two problems with that for me. Um, and it's shared by many others. The first is that I knit a lot faster than I purl. So I wanted to knit more than I purl. And the second is that um, for me, because of the way that I knit, my pearls use slightly more yarn than my knit, and I knew I was going to be tight on yarn on this project. So I did what many other people did, and I basically flipped it. So on the wrong side, I'm doing the knit and purl motif, and then on the right side, I'm knitting all the way across. So that way, I am knitting way more than I'm purling, which is great. So I knit on this basically all week. Um, on Friday night, I ran out of yarn. I thought I was going to anyways, and then I did. I was so disappointed. So um, I'm knitting this out of Becoming Art with Carol Worsted, which is 100% wool base. And this is in the Driftwood colorway. Well, she doesn't carry that base anymore, and she doesn't even really dye that colorway very often. She doesn't take custom color requests, and there's none in her shop right now. So I went to Ravelry and I did find a distaff, but the distaff is for a different base and a different base. So I did go ahead and purchase that and we're going to see how it goes. The pictures in the distaff are pretty dark, and so I don't know how well it's going to blend. But I tossed my stash and I really have nothing in my stash that is um, this colorway, which is like a brown gray. I don't have anything. I only have stuff that is way lighter. So work comes to work, I'll get it, and then... Um, it will be close enough, or uh, I will use the other stuff I found in my stash that's lighter. But either way, I'm going to have to splice in something that isn't going to be 100% yet. So right now, I'm trying to kind of come to terms with it. I'm hoping for the best. I'm hoping that it will not basically look bad. I spent so long on this fall. I've been knitting it forever, and it sat there for so long. And now that the end's in sight, it's 
really disappointing to me that I'm running out of yarn. I had a feeling the whole time I was going to, but I had 60 yards more than the pattern called for. So I really naively thought, I'm just going to trust. I'm going to trust that I'm going to be okay. And I read through the Ravelry project, and many, many people have ran out of yarn. So it's not something that I'm alone in. And I knew it was a chance when I started. So I really want this finished object. I really, really like it. So I'm just going to have to forge on. This episode brought to you by Kickstarter. My husband totally drinks these all the time. And um, I have never had one. So I had like a sip. But it's mid-morning, and I've kind of been dragging. And as you can tell, I cannot find words. So I thought a little kickstart would it do me well. Hopefully it kicks in pretty soon, right? we got a whole podcast to do. So I will show you guys the scene next week once I get it, and then, um, or if I get it, by that time that I record, and what I plan to do. I really want it. And so I'll probably just forge that. Um, it's, it's really almost done. When I started and you pick up the section, I had around 250 stitches, and I have less than 100 left. And so I, I am in the finishing stages. And those last rows, when you get down to the, that part of the triangle, really don't take that much. My husband's suggestion was just to bind it off and then have, have this scoop next. And he said, well, it just sit really well on your shoulders, but yeah, but I don't think it's going to look right. I guess it's an option. I could always try it and rip it back, but we're going to try this route first. I left enough yarn that I can kind of um, blend in the new yarn enough that it shouldn't be such an abrupt change. So with that being a total failure, or at least feeling like a failure, I cast on something new. I really should have picked up something that I have been working on, but I, I did. So I was looking to do some socks, and I really wanted to do something fun and go into deep stash. Um, when I first started knitting, I picked up a lot of highly variegated, super bold colors. And I do wear a lot of bold stuff. I, I do. Because I think it's fun, and why not? So for me, they were a really good compliment. The more I started knitting, the more I realized that to have versatile wardrobe staples and spend all that time on it, I really should limit myself to the amount of crazy variegation. And that's when I moved into more solids and semi-solids. And so for the first few years of my stash, it, it's quite a fun adventure. So in that thing, I thought that I would knit a cardigan out of this, so I got two skeins of Urban Dip yarn. And she is still dying. And each of these skeins was 550 yards, and they were four ounces. This is 100% merino. It's a really uh, fun, fun colorway. I love it. You know, I still love it. My color preferences haven't changed over the years. It's just this out of a cardigan would be... <laughs> Can you imagine? It would be really funky. And it's, it's just not as versatile as I'd like. So I pulled it out and um, was planning on knitting a pair of socks for it. But as I felt the yarn and as I was winding it, it's a really nice merino. Uh, and it's not very tightly applied. It's got a lot of loss and bounce to it. It's cloth. But that also means to me, I would wear holes in those socks. Uh, it's just not as hardy as I would like for sock hair. So, what do you do? So then I got to thinking, I really wanted to use that yarn. I purchased it in 2007, so it's seven years old. It deserves to be knit. So, I have a nephew that's graduating high school and going on to college. And he's had a city girlfriend for several, several years. And I've never knit her anything. I've knit something for every other woman in the family but her. And so I decided that I would go along and I would knit her something. So 
She is going to college somewhere very cold, or at least cold for the winter. So I decided that I would knit her some fingerless mitts. And I looked around on Ravelry, but I, there wasn't anything that I found that I loved. I wanted something very simple because this is so variegated that I just wanted something really simple and normal and that lets the yarn shine for the crazy colors that it is. So I decided that I was going to knit some bigger lipsticks. And so I went ahead and passed on for my own creation. So these are the prototypes and I will knit the, um, I will knit the real mix, the gift mix, after I get done with the prototype. Um, and so I'm going to show you the, so very simple, the, um, I'm going to make lots of changes when I go ahead and I make the uh, other mix for her. I did want a thumb hole, but I didn't want um, an actual thumb at all. So this hole looks really big because I've been wearing these a little bit to try to figure out what I wanted to do for several issues. But overall, I mean, they're, they're great. These are the problems that I'm having, which are, you know, problems in knitting are just sometimes, like, I would be preferable if it was different, but I'm good. So this is a looser applied yarn, and it's really bad decision on my part, but I'm using signature double points. And signatures are... They're very, very pointy, and I, because these are stiletto tips, they're the pointiest one thing. And so this yarn is splitting on me, um, but that really could be used, could be fixed if I use, if I use see, oh my goodness, it could be fixed if I use the blunter, blunter tip needle, but I really like knitting with my signature, so I'm not going to do that. So that really is my own decision, but it's taking me longer because it's splitting. Then, the second thing that I'm not crazy about is that this is the cast on it. Okay. Pretty normal. There's a little bit of white spaces. Then you get this entire wonderful section right here that has no white at all. And then you get down here and the white spaces start to increase. That white where the dye did not take on the yarn is in the gray section. And it seems to ebb and flow because when I got to this top ribbing part, it's not there at all. That, that white space isn't there. Um, and if we look at the ball of yarn, the lighter ones you can kind of see there, but those are still gray. They, they're still gray, like when I'm looking at it in real life. I can't visually tell by looking in the skein or looking in the long ball that that was getting at there. And it's not a problem. I don't mind white space. Um, but what I do mind is it being so ununiform. I would prefer it to be all the way throughout the skein or to not be in the skein at all instead of, like, hitting it. Because I think it makes my finished object look discombobulated? I don't really know how to say it. Like, it doesn't look as uniform as I would like it to look because I have these long sections where there is no white, and then I have these other long sections which have a significant amount of visual white in it. So I'm not really happy with it. Please remember, this is seven years ago. I probably got this on sale. It could have said, it could have said it was cheap. I have no idea. So in no way am I blaming the dyer. Um, but it, it basically made this for, um, made this project for me. I would not give this as a gift. So, here you go. I haven't bought them, haven't worn them yet, so sorry. But that's my thumb hole. My thumb hole is bigger because I have man hands. If you didn't, couldn't tell from my story of tennis caps, I also have man hands. They're not dainty at all. Which, you know what, was on a little bit of a rant. Everybody else in my family, all the women, have these beautiful, dainty, little, pristine, just gorgeous hands. I got man hands. Maybe that's why I'm the last kid. They saw my hands and went running. But I got my dad's hands. 
So um, my thumb is quite big. I actually usually wear a large glove. Like I do significantly have large hands. And um, a lot of times when I'm looking at fingerless mitts, the mitt, um, if it has a thumb hole, the thumb hole itself is usually not big enough. A lot of them are glorified buttonholes where you cast off um, on one row and then the way around the next row, you cast back on those stitches using a various, various methods. Uh, but the problem with that for me is when I do that and my, my thumb is so large, I end up stretching these stitches right here because the opening needs to accommodate my thumb. And so what I was really doing on this pattern is trying to build in some short rows into that and some other things, basically lengthen out this tiny section here and on the back side right over here to allow for enough room that those stitches don't totally get stretched out. The problem that I have is over time, because I do wear my mitts a lot. I wear them around the house to clean. I wear them driving in the car. I wear them knitting. I wear my fingerless mitts as much as I wear my hats. I mean, I wear them all the time. And it starts to weaken, and I'm always afraid that it's going to um, it's gonna weaken to the point where that, that snaps or it wears through. And honestly, it's not as comfortable as it could be for me because my thumb is so big. So I went ahead and figured out some different things I can do. That's why there's some weird pooling here um, because I was doing some short rows and some other things. And it created some fun, fun pooling patterns. Um, but I went ahead and I finished it off. And I actually waited to record this morning before I finished it. Um, and it does go over my elbow, which is where I like it to go. Um, I probably, I'm going to add probably links to the, the next ones that I do. Make sure they go a little bit further up. So I really like mitts that go up over my arms, which is funny because I hate knitting sleeves, but I don't mind knitting these. So figure that one out. And on, I think they look better than they look off. So I really wear these in the winter quite a bit. Uh, I wear a lot of hoodie sweaters in the winter. It's not super cold where I live in Oregon. Um, it's around, at night, it can get to the high 20s. In the mornings, it's usually around 30 degrees. Um, but to me, that's not super cold. I grew up someplace um, in northern Michigan where it can be negative 10. And so, you know, 30 doesn't feel so cold to me. And so a lot of times, I'm not wearing a winter coat. I wear hooded sweatshirts and just basically lots of layers that get me through. And so when I was knitting these, somebody asked, what the heck do you even use that for? First of all, she didn't know what a fingerless mitt was, and then I explained it, and she basically told me it was stupid. Thank you, other moms at gymnastics. So I was like, well, thanks for your opinion. Still going to knit it. But I put them under um, usually a hooded sweatshirt or um, – an outer layer, and so that will come to here, and then I still have this much so that I can grab my steering wheel and it not be super cold. I can still button and zip my kids' clothes. I can still um, use my phone and text, all of that stuff. Um, and I usually wear these, like when I'm just picking up the house or vacuuming or something, I wear these quite a bit. Um, especially now that I'm home, I cut off the heat during the day because I'm cheap. And I just figure that I can add another layer. I love my husband, but he is totally a pansy about heat. And when he comes home, the first thing he does is turn it on, which is fine. Um, but for me, just wear, wear more layers. So I wear fingerless mitts all the time. So I'm going to knit the second one to this. And then I will change the, make the changes I want to make and knit a pair for her for graduation. I don't know if that's a good graduation present, but I can't really think of what else to get her. Yay, so I'll take them. So the second thing I wanted to show you was I knit some sleeves when I was home for Christmas. So I went home in January of this year for, as my daughter would call it, second Christmas. And when I was there, it was cold. It was really cold. And so I knit some and why it is a sleeve is because it doesn't have a thumb hole. 
which is basically a glorified tube with increases to accommodate my upper arm. I wear these all the time. I probably will knit another pair of these um, in the next little bit because I wear them so much. I'm very glad I got them back. I left them at home and my mom sent them in my Easter package. So thanks mom. So these were knit out of fish belly fiber work in her soft base, which is uh, merino and nylon. Um, and all, all they are is basically a suit. If you have really dainty legs, see, I'm on the dainty, dainty fingers, dainty legs, you could wear these conceivably as also leg warmers, but that will never work for me in my tennis cap. So this is the way I usually wear these. And they do go up over my elbow. These actually go further than the other ones, and I prefer that extra length. So on my next pair, I will do more length um, to make these come up further. Um, but they don't go over my arm. I do like that I can adjust them. Like if I want them to come up this much, it's fine. And a lot of times I do that when I'm driving. So again, I can pull the steering wheel on the palm of my hand and it not be too cold. Uh, I like this colorway. It was one of her Christmas colorways. It's gray, red, and green. This colorway ended up lighter than her other ones. It was kind of a one-of-a-kind game. And this is the problem that I had when I knitted this. It doesn't bother me um, to wear them or anything, but the picture looks more like this. This is more saturated, and the colorways are a little darker. But the more I knit, I don't know if you can tell, like all the way through the, my first knit, this is the first one, the colorway starts to lighten until you basically get to here. So if I put them next to each other, it's not a play on light. That is the difference of the colors. I really prefer the darker saturated one and wish that my full skein would have been like this. Um, but as you can tell, it wasn't a lot of yardage that was this colorway. It was about to here. So it, it really wasn't that much. The majority of this skein is this lighter colorway. So, um, I have enough to knit another pair of these, and so I probably will. Um, this is about half a skein of And I, I do wear them all the time. So, you know, some people are different things. Like, Jeff kind of looks at me, my husband, and he's like, you are a crazy knitter person because you're wearing knitted sleeves and that's it. And I'm like, I know. Like I have other clothes on and everything, like that's not it. But you know, it this is definitely something that I probably would have looked at in the store before being a knitter and been like, why? And now that I'm a knitter, I'm like, they are awesome. <laughs> they totally rock. Okay, so let's move on to new things. Yay, some enabling, and then we'll get to rent some ladies. So. I got an Easter present, and I'm so excited about it. So when I was home in January, I went to the fabric store with my mom, and I picked up fabric. And for Easter, she made me bags. You know how I love my project bags? I have so many, and I love them all. So she made me three sizes, and I'm going to show each one of them because they're awesome. My husband thought that my mom bought them. That's how good of a job she did. So congratulations. And I love them so much. I love this fabric. So this is the fabric of the outside, fox and birds and flowers. And then on the inside, it's polka dot that coordinates. So this is a small pouch. I would say it really is an ocean pouch. Um, I won't be able to get anything other than that in here. But it's a great little ocean pouch. And this is the medium pouch. So for scale. Hold on. For scale, that's how much bigger it is. And I can fit, you could probably fit two skeins, a two skein project in here comfortably, or a one skein project. Three would be tight. Um, not the skeins itself, the skeins would fit fine, but once you got like part, like more than halfway through that knitted object, putting that in with this bag would be, would be more difficult. So I would really call this a two skein bag. 
And she did such a good job of boxes on the middle of both sides. And again, each one is lined in the same polka dot design. And then the big bag. So I'll get that for scale from the medium one. It's about 25% larger. And this really is a sweater bag. It's quite large. Um, you can fit, I would think, four, I could fit four, a four skinny fingering, fingering weight sweater or sport weight sweater I could fit here. A working weight would be a little more troublesome, but I'm a bigger gal. So if you're smaller, definitely could. Again, the polka dot. I love the polka dot. They're like a fun surprise. So this one has different boxes. She did a really nice job. I'm so excited. Um, and my mom's not a knitter, so this is really great. It has some great features that I don't know if she, like, really thought about and did them or they were happy accidents. But on the side, there is this hole where the zipper goes. Um, it makes it really easy to hold the tab because I can put my finger in here and hold it to basically give me enough leverage to open it up quite easily. But the second thing is, if you're knitting um, color work, or you don't want to open up the zipper to knit your project, you can pull it through this opening here and you can just knit out and then um, put your project inside when you're done. And so you don't have to ever um, fully unzip the project bag to be able to knit from it. And I don't have any project bags like that, so I think that's what I'm going to try to do next to see if I like that. But she did um, box bottoms on all of them. And so they will stand up straight and then they're facing. So they're perfect and I love it. So thanks, Mom. Wonderful Easter present. I'm very excited. I told her I hadn't been buying any bags because since January I knew that at one point in the future she was going to make me bags. And so I've been so good about it. And um, I haven't bought any bags since, since then. So for four or five months I haven't bought anything. Awesome. Such a good reward for being a good little girl. All right, and that's all the enabling I have to show you. It's really not enabling. You can't buy them, but I got them. They're awesome. I love bags. So, it's on to the rants and rants section. It's been a pretty good week. Uh, the major things that happened this week is that my daughter was tested for um, her kindergarten readiness. And so they test all key gardeners um, for kindergarten readiness, um, but they usually don't do it this early. Uh, they usually do it, at least where I'm from, until August or the beginning of the school year. To basically find out where everybody's at before they start school. Um, but because my daughter is, has ASD, um, there's a lot more hoops that I have to jump through to be able to get her into kindergarten. And whether or not she was going to mainstream or she wasn't, I would still have to do all these things. So for a normal, quote-unquote normal kid, they would get a packet. If they wanted to come to a um, orientation, they could. But you basically get a packet, fill up the packet, send it into the office. Then you get something saying whether they're in AM or PM. And then in August, you get to do um, a meeting with the teacher and do the kindergarten readiness. You put on readiness, and then I think the, the meeting with the teacher is separate, and then you just go to school. For us, it's a bit more involved. Um, so, a normal kid maybe has three things they have to do, three meetings they have to go to. We have to go to at least double that. Um, I had a home visit where a, a member from the school, school representative, came to my house. Um, that's for several reasons. Um, but we got to meet one-on-one, -on -one and I got to share my concerns and information. And basically, she got to get a feel of our family. Uh, I think that that is wonderful. Unfortunately, um, as with all cases in, in society, there's a lot of parents who don't care. And so when you're dealing with a family child, part of it is looking at the family as a whole and what that means whether there'll be a help or a hindrance, and I'm sure that's part of the factor. So we, we got through that just fine. Um, we had a little bump, um, so I won't talk about them here. 
and then uh, they went and they observed her without testing her in a preschool to see what her preschool was like and basically judge how much they do there and how how translatable it is going to be to the classroom. And then on Friday, they actually sat with her school representative for about an hour and a half and then tested her. I was very nervous for this test. I didn't want to cut my child to like make her pass it, right? I don't want to basically falsify and say that she's somewhere that she's not. I want her to be placed correctly and then, you know, deal with whatever placement that she gets. But um, she only missed three questions. I'm so proud of her. I was like the beaming mama when I found out. I was so happy. All the work for, I mean, really, for three years, we have just been trying to get to a point where she could enter sea garden. Maybe not with a step ahead, but I'm, I'm a fighting force. If she had a chance to mainstream, a chance to be able to fit in. And this was the first time that we had like a really concrete kind of result. This is absolutely. They were blown away, super happy with the progress, way outperformed what they thought that she was capable of. So that's fantastic. Um, the questions she got wrong were very, very easy um, to correct. So, like, instead of 21, she said 12. She, she switched the numbers. Um, so, I mean, that is, like, all the stuff she got wrong were really, really clear cut of where she went wrong. They weren't necessarily, like, have to be investigated of where is she, where is she at, why did she get this wrong. So that was, even the stuff she got wrong was good, right? Like, what did that happen in life? So it was a great week. I feel wonderful. Um, so now, what do we have to do for that? So it's like, so much. So I have another school visit that I'm going to take my daughter to to basically show her um, the different parts of the school. So like a normal kindergartner, you're going to come to the kindergarten classroom, and you're going to show them the playground, maybe the cafeteria. Um, for us, um, she will be getting speech pathology, so we're going to introduce her to a speech teacher, to the pathology room, um, they have sensory rooms for her um, in case something comes up. So there's a lot more that she gets to see and a lot more rules in some ways for her. Um, when can she go to these places? How does she ask that if she needs to go to the sensory room, like she's having an issue? Um, and so all of that. I never knew what a sensory room was, so I'll just tell you. A sensory room basically is a room inside the school that they have. They didn't have this when I was growing up. They they have them at least in my school that my daughter is going to now. And it has things like a swing in it. Or she can go to a corner, a dark corner, and basically enclose herself. One of the things that she really enjoys is sensory deprivation. Because she has a hard time eliminating a lot of the sensory um, input that she has, when she gets overwhelmed, we have encouraged her to, instead of having a behavioral misfit or a tantrum or acting out in a really negative way, to instead go someplace where she can kind of limit her sensory input, calm herself down, and then reinsert herself back into the situation in a sociably acceptable way. That's taken a long time, but basically to be able to do that, if she's having a really hard time, she will go to the sensory room where they basically have a place where she can go somewhere, like on a bean bag, and turn off the lights and calm down, uh, which is important for her. I don't know how much she'll need it. I don't know if she'll ever need it, but it's really a benefit that is available. Um, and so we have to go through that and find out what sensory um, items she can use, how she uses them, how she goes there, does she have to sign in, does she have to, how does she do all of that, right? So I have that to do, um, and that's going to be this month. I have an IEP meeting, which is an individual education program meeting, and that will be with the teacher, the principal, two therapists, that I have currently two therapists that she will have at school, and you can me and Josh, just like eight people. Um, and we'll have that. And then um, we'll have another meeting in August, another tour in August, 
and then I think we're almost done. There's, there's two or three things left to do. Um, so that's where we start to get some, get some stuff rolling. I feel like the major hurdles are out of the way um, of the testing, because now that the testing is done, we can schedule the other appointments, and we can get it wrapped up. So there's just a lot more involved. Like I thought, you know, when I had a baby, like I would just go sign her up for kitty garden. So naive. So naive. But it's been great. Um, and I don't know. I, I know I, I haven't really talked about stuff, and that's not, nothing about knitting, but I, such, such great news. And it affects everything else. There's some other stuff that's going on that is really stressful and awful and our decisions and instead of focusing on that and just focusing on some of the really great positives that are happening with my kid and my family and trying to shut out um, some negative forces. I think we all have that in life where we just have stuff. There's always stuff. Life isn't always calm. So you just kind of try to focus on it. One of my things is I knit. What's going to bother me in knitting? It's all wonderful to me. So I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Thanks for listening to me rant on about getting my kid into the garden. Who knew it was going to be so difficult? I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week full of knitting. So knit with some of you guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye.